During the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian defense forces captured thousands of Russian soldiers. Experts estimate the number of prisoners to have reached 2,500, according to the RBC Ukraine. With the advance of Ukrainian troops in the Kursk region, the exchange pool has begun to grow rapidly. In the early days of the operation, videos surfaced showing Russian soldiers surrendering. In some cases, this occurred on a mass scale. There is also information that Russian conscripts were repeatedly captured. Russian opposition media outlets, important stories and agency identified at least 22 individuals who lost contact in the early days of the Ukrainian offensive. These were soldiers of the 488th Guards Motorized Rifle Regiment of the Russian Federation, conscripts from the Kostroma, Vologda and Tumen regions, the Republic of Komi and other areas. According to The Independent, citing an unnamed Ukrainian colonel, Ukrainian forces have captured about 2,000 Russian soldiers since the start of the operation in the Kursk region. Oleksandr Kovalenko, a military political observer for the Information Resistance Group of Ukraine, believes that this number may be even higher. They were a little late with their information. The number of captured Russians is now almost 2,500, he told RBC Ukraine. According to The Independent, replenishing the exchange fund could have been one of the goals of the Kursk operation. Among other things, because there are no strong fortifications and Russian groups there, as in other parts of the front line. The large number of prisoners was a side effect of the rapid advance. The Independent suggests that replenishing the exchange pool was one of Ukraine's goals in the operation. However, Kovalenko believes that such a large-scale operation could not have been launched solely for the purpose of expanding the exchange pool. A large number of forces and means are involved, and we are also suffering losses. And our military is being captured, much less than the Russians, in a sense, hundreds of times less. Setting the task of taking as many prisoners as possible is a very risky mission. If something goes wrong, the operation will fail. No one expected them to surrender en masse, the expert noted. Currently in the Kursk region, you can see what the Russian army is like, the expert believes. In this case, conscripts do not care about the Kursk region. It's not that they hate Vladimir Putin or anything like that. They don't care about Kursk, about Sudza. Conscripts are not going to die for all this. They do not want to fight, so they are surrendering en masse. The source added. Ukrainian defenders are no longer advancing as quickly through the Kursk region as they did in the first days of the border breakthrough. Putin's army is trying to stabilize the front line in this area. Analysts from the Institute for the Study of War analyzed the situation in Kursk and how it will affect the further course of the war. New satellite images from Maksar have shown that the Russians have begun actively digging trenches and building a new line of defense in the Lugov area along the lugov rilsk glukov highway. Another satellite image showed new field fortifications of the Russian armed forces in the south of Lugov near Highway 38K-024. The new defensive line appeared 17 kilometers from the northernmost point of the Ukrainian armed forces presence in the Kursk region. This fact indicates that Putin is afraid of the rapid advance of the Ukrainian armed forces, which is supported by armored vehicles. The Kremlin also wants to secure its land-based communication lines, which could come under the fire control of the Ukrainian armed forces. In this area, the Russian Federation has always used the railway to transport its troops and ammunition to the Kharkiv region. Russian railways notified Belarus that all rail traffic on the oriol kursk line will cease as of August the 12th. With the march on Kursk region, Kyiv showed the West that it doesn't care about restrictions on the use of long-range weapons. Also, with this operation, Ukraine showed that they do not plan to sign peace with Putin in exchange for the occupied territories as Trump would like. In simple terms, Kyiv has made it clear that it is no longer a punching ball, the Times reports. British military expert Roger Boyce is sure that Zelensky made the decision to go to Kursk after the NATO summit in Washington. Then, Ukraine was once again not invited to the alliance, which did not please Kyiv much. Immediately after the summit, Volodymyr Zelensky concluded that Ukraine needs to fight the Kremlin in some other way. 
Kiev is tired of constantly hearing no from the West to requests to use long-range weapons against military facilities on Russian territory. The Ukrainian armed forces have broken through the border with the Russian Federation using American and German armored vehicles. However, ATA CMS missiles have not yet been seen in this military operation. Kiev made it clear that they are ready to continue to defend themselves, even if Trump comes to power in the United States in November 2024. Boyce is sure that with the military operation in Khorishchen, Kiev showed the world that the Ukrainian army is mobile and fast.